that's not breakfast. Neither is coffee. You do a lot of sit-ups. I'm not going to treat you if you aren't interested in living. You okay, honey? I just got up too fast. So welcome to our new house member, Alan. Hi. Some of them actually seem like they're doing okay. Like they might get lives and be semi-interesting people. It's the latest controversial movie to hit Netflix. It's called To the Bone, and it comes out officially tomorrow. It follows a 20-year-old girl named Ellen battling an eating disorder who ends up getting help or looking for help at least at a facility. While the film shows a lot of funny moments, it's also under fire right now because a lot of people are saying, hey, it just glamorizes eating disorders. So to sort things out for us this morning, we have psychologist Dr. Dina Cabrera, who's the executive clinical director at Rosewood Centers for Eating Disorders. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You just saw this film yesterday, yes. last night. Mm -hmm. Your immediate thoughts. Well, I was disappointed, I have to say. I thought that the portrayal of eating disorder, particularly anorexia, was skewed. Uh, we have a very coquettic, meaning thin, a frail, Caucasian, charming woman, Lily Collins, who is playing this role. And so it really gives a narrow you know, image or portrayal of someone with an eating disorder. It's very skewed. It's not always so obvious, and that's why we're right. talking about this, because beyond what you may think someone who's going through anorexia right. or is anorexic looks like, there's so many other signs, and we want parents to be aware of that, because this film mm -hmm. could, like you say, sway someone the wrong way and be even more encouraging. Exactly. It could be very triggering. The images, there's almost you know, some people will take it as a how-to guide because they do show wow. tricks of the trade. Wow. Uh, and so it is worrisome that people, you know, especially young, impressionable teens, will use this as what we call thinspiration. And the film even portrays her as her art being used on the internet as thinspiration. So as, a, as an actress or the, you know, the actor, mm -hmm. that's what her difficulty is, is she's also a part of that world. And so my fear is that the film is going to do exactly what she was struggling with and the, the conflict that she had. Instead of trying to help somebody yes. and seeing why it's a bad thing. Exactly. What, what can parents do? Because it's out there, it's on Netflix, yes. you know, the kids are hearing about it, they're going to be watching it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the first thing, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to allow my 16 year old to watch it at this time. She's just not ready. Mm -hmm. I think that it doesn't really give the whole uh, understanding of the underlying issues of an eating disorder. I think they tried. Uh, they tried to show how the family was uh, impacted and mm -hmm. they're suffering alongside the person with the eating disorder. So I think they did a really good job there. But I think that they show, they glamorize the behaviors. They, they show the, 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 the aspects of the tricks of the trade, and they don't really give an understanding of the suffering that this person is, you know, experiencing. So I would caution parents. I would say, please, you know, talk to your your loved one or your child before they watch it, and then after to process. You know, how did this impact you? What do you think about, you know, her behavior? What was going on? And also say, treatment is not necessarily like that. This mm -hmm. is a Hollywood movie. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How big of a problem are eating disorders here in Arizona and, and you know, the age group that suffers from them? We primarily, you know, it, the onset of age, uh, eating disorders is about 14, 12 wow. to 14. Wow. And also, we have about 273,000 people that are suffering with eating disorders in Arizona. In Arizona yes. alone. Yes, and that's the issue. They show anorexia, and eating disorders come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, people may see this film and see her and say, well, I'm not that sick. Yeah. And so, again, it glamorizes that you have to be really ill and really, you know, gaunt looking to even be, you know, worthy of going to treatment. It's not necessarily true. Uh, so before we go, before we go, we have a, just a little bit of time here. I want to go over what are some of the signs that parents should mm -hmm. look for in other adults? One thing that you may see first before you'll see a, a difference or a change in their eating patterns is mood changes. You know, anxiety issues, depression, uh, functioning at school, or lack of interest, or isolation. These are the things that are consequences or comorbid issues that go alongside an eating disorder before you may see 
you know, changes in their weight. Okay. You may not see changes in their weight at all. So looking for these other signs may, you know, be present first. So important to talk about. Yes. Thank you for, for coming in here this morning to talk about that. And if, again, the biggest thing is if you see any signs, as the doc was mm -hmm. saying, contact the experts to get some help before yes. it's too late. Rosewood on their website has lots of resources. Okay, fabulous. Thank you, Thank you so much. Scotty?